up, everybody? Welcome to the Masters of Sport episode six podcast. The Empire, Sh- no, the Return of the Jedi. Yeah, yeah. My favorite one as a child, Ewoks, all the I way. Thought, no, I thought you said Empire Strikes Back. No, it's the best one as an adult. As a child, uh, no, I was my, all. Mine, as still to this day, is a New Hope. Is the, oh, the four. yeah. Because I think there's so many really, really good religious and philosophical lessons. Oh, you love that theology, dude. Don't I you? love that shit. Like I love, I love that that. I like that's the stuff that I think about. All right. That's why I like Star Trek because it's so similar to that. I've never gotten into Star Trek. I've never gotten into noise rock because it sucks. Some people say that. I've been at some noise shows where I'm like, I hate this. I've been at others. I'm like, this is wonderful. I was hoping you used the same thing for the last episode. You know what, Dane? Some people say pushing the piano is just pushing buttons. Yep. (laughs) Here we go. Hit play. Here we go. You know who, talking about pushing buttons, I saw Dan Deacon live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. He's all buttons, but I, I sort of like no, Dan Deacon. He, I'm pretty sure he played through an iPod and would manipulate things through the iPod, too. He had, like, a whammy pedal. He was so nice. He let me look at his board, too. Where I, I saw him at, like, it was in New Jersey. Was that like he this, play in the center of the floor, too? He will, yeah. but here he played on the top of a playground on okay. the slide because it, it was a three-band show. It was Dan Deacon... No Age yeah. and Deer Hunter. Okay. I think that's who it was. That's pretty true. And they would sort of like alternate songs or sets. I forget which one it was. I was, I was partying while I was there yeah. too. I was having fun. And um, do you but, not have fun? Do you have to. You have to party to have fun. No, really? not at Is all. Is that how you were? No, nah, dude. I got my 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 friends too. They're fun to hang out with too. Well, you're straight edge. No, I, I would I would not claim that. But I have friends that are, and yeah. they're fun too. They're fun to like. I always thought straight edge guys were tools. Nah, you go to a hardcore show and stuff, man. You should see some of those dudes in the yeah, pit. Yeah, but they I like, feel like outside of that, they're nah, not fun. They're fun. They like brag about being hardcore. You were hanging out with them when they were like seventeen, and it was True. like cool to be like that. Like when they're adults still doing it, it's like you want to talk about commitment to a cause and like <laughs> sort of like someone you can like the count straight on edge to. Cause. Oh man, don't knock it. <laughs> I'm not it's, knocking them. It's I'm just a good mocking, thing. I'm just mocking them. Oh, I do have one straight edge buddy. He, he's a great person, but he loves coffee. And last time I saw him, I started trolling him. I'm like, you know, coffee, like the chemical compound, it's like try meth. And, and like, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> just to see what he, what he would do about it. He didn't uh, want it. No, nah, I, I think he just ignored me, but it was funny. <laughs> Because I started thinking about it one time, like if I was straight edge and I like had to have surgery, would I go without anesthesia? Like, no, I, I don't know. i am bet there's so. Dude, I did you ever? There have, was someone have, out there. Who have does you it. ever had fentanyl? Uh, I, fentanyl. Probably. I had my wisdom teeth taken out. That was like the biggest surgery Dude, that, I had. When I had my neck thing, I don't know if I've told. I think I've told the story even on this. They took podcast. out your neck bone. Yeah. When they when they took this thing out. Huh. I, my blood pressure was so high, they were like, we're going to give you fentanyl right now. And as soon as they gave it to me, I was like, oh, my freaking gosh. This they is zombified crazy. you. Yeah, and it was like 10 minutes to relax me, and then they, like, upped the dose, and I was out. Gone. Yeah. So Man. that takes us into drugs, uh, like Halloween drugs. Yeah, the sugar high. <laughs> you know, I remember growing up, it was, watch out for those people that are going to give you apples and put drugs inside the apples. Yeah. And my dad would be like, how are you putting drugs inside the apples? Yeah, that's like... <laughs> I'm trying to think about that. Like, drugs cost money, I, yeah, I would think, right? Like, give kids yeah, drugs. they're just like, here, let's just hand this out to them. Like, <laughs> yeah. see what happens. <laughs> it's like, hand drugs out, and then when they take them, we don't even get to see oh, yeah. the experience. Like, Thanks, Nancy Reagan. That really yeah. happened. <laughs> Dare to give your drugs away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Dane. Wait. Uh, so... We're filming this yeah. episode it's the week of Halloween. The week of Halloween. So for those of you, you know, we just started this podcast six podcasts ago. This is episode six. So next year we'll actually have a, a dedicated Halloween podcast. Yeah, we'll have like props and stuff. Maybe yeah, we'll wear we'll costumes. Up. Yeah. Are you go, go, doing anything? Like you going I go out with the, with the kids, yeah. Oh, with the kids? Yeah. Do you dress oh, up? I don't, no, I won't go out. Lame. I don't mind. I, I would, Lame. but like... Dude, I literally, I love going out with the kids. Lame. Oh. <laughs> well, I went one year, 
my kid was. I'll say this. Last year, I took two shots of Everclear when I was out with my kids. At, <laughs> there was parents partying, and I was like, I'll take some. Oh, on our block, they hand out beers to the adults. Yeah, There's yeah. A few houses are like candy for the kids, and they're like, you want a beer, like type yeah, of thing. And candy it's like, for the adults. Yeah. Um, one year, Reese won a Scooby Doo, my son. Yeah. And I, um, I was shaggy. I wore, I wore a green T-shirt and khakis. <laughs> but like, that's what I did, with, like, to just help him out, like, with it. My wife and me are going to a party this Saturday. Well, whenever Halloween, like the day of. This is going to be at least our second best couple's costume. Okay. Before, you have like a ranking, like on the on the my wall of your personal house. one. This we went as you have Earl's Halloween costume yes. rankings. Yes. No, we do. I won as Chigor the one year, which f was phenomenal. I love that one. I had my quarter and flip it. The other one we did was the Midsummer Bear. Yeah. I was the bear. I was like the boyfriend when she, spoilers, burns him at the end. Yeah. And she was the, the May Queen. <laughs> this year, we're going as, um, what should we call it? What movie? Lost in Translation. Oh, yeah. From the karaoke scene. Yes. Oh, that's so, good. Yeah, so I'm that's where, good. But that's what I we're going as. I would say that's your best. Uh, see, maybe because you know it's someone Who else. Who was that chick? It was uh, uh, Scarlett Johansson. Yes, I was gonna yeah. say her, it was Black her, Widow. Yeah, yes, I love that movie, dude. And yeah, I was like in love with her. You in college. Went, there's a lot of people probably still in yeah. love with her. <laughs> um, I don't know. She, she's that, a, she's that, a little bit more popular now. That soundtrack was awesome too. Yeah. That was like a lot. I feel of good like we dance. might have talked about this. Death already. in Vegas was on that. Uh, you like Air. this stuff? Air. You, you dude, I'm emo. No, you're not. No, but I like I I get I'm sensitive. You are. What so was that? Love, what episode was that? Four. Yeah, yeah, I love I love like heart feely stuff, and I also yeah. love just raging too. Yeah, <laughs> and you, I, I remember you once telling me that Halloween comes around, and you like. Maybe your wife has to hide the candy, not yeah. on the kids, but on you. <laughs> Is that right, or am I, am I exaggerating a little bit? So, so we have the snitch witch, or what is it called? No, the uh, I don't know. This is my first to hearing it. Switch, switch witch. witch, yeah, switch witch. So the switch witch is the kids give like three quarters of their candy, and then we, in turn, give them like a gift. Well, it's like a like a ten dollar okay. gift, whatever. Um. And so one of the problems is that I love candy. Like Butterfingers are my favorite. Oh, those uh, ones, like, I always feel you bite into that and, like, I'm just waiting for my tooth to ship. Well, I, dude, I make it so that it doesn't even stick to my teeth. Anyway, <laughs> I eat, I could eat so much candy that Caitlin started to actually, like, hide the candy and throw it out because she's like, dude, you're eating, like, pounds of candy in a day <laughs> and i would get like sick to my stomach go to bed like oh man i don't feel good She's like, dude you just ate five bags of skittles because i also like skittles i like m&ms dude you name it i love it you are a fat kid at heart <laughs> yeah. through and through yeah. like complete neck beard on like the she, computer yeah, happy. She, she'd come outside and she'd come outside i'd be eating like the three musketeers i eat all the chocolate around it so it's just the marshmallow left and she's like you just spent that much time <laughs> eating a three musketeers. Like, what is wrong with you? That is awesome. Yeah. All right. So, so yes. You have your silly candy around this month. You got to check yourself for diabetes. You ever see the, there's a Metalocalypse episode where they all like have candy and, and is it, to, what's his name? I forget it. But the one, uh, oh, it's doggy. He like ends up becoming diabetic from eating so much candy for the week. I don't know. Watch Metalocalypse if you haven't. Is that like, like noise rock? No, it's like death metal. Okay. Nathan Explosion. Sounds like Cookie Monster. <laughs> like type of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. It's wonderful. Yeah, I, I haven't... Same people who did um, home movies. Okay. Uh, is it Justin? Brandon Small, creator, I think who it is. I haven't watched Adult Swim since... This uh, was a decade plus ago now, I would well, I'm say. Just saying, I watched uh, the one with the meatball. Oh, Aqua Teen Hunger yeah, Force. I watched that quite a bit. Yeah, that one's funny. I wrote a thesis on that, you know that? No. I'm not kidding. I got a master's writing a thesis oh on that. Oh, my God. That. Yeah. All right, if we're talking, though, Halloween, real quick. Yeah. Greatest horror villain. Greatest horror villain? Dude, I'll be honest with you. I know this is a little lame, but, like, I used to actually get scared thinking about Jason. 
Oh. Like, I would, growing up, see that hockey mask and... And actually, the noise, it's ironic because they're blowing leaves outside. Yeah. Like, but that noise of a chainsaw, and I would... I would. That's Leatherface, though. But, or, or whatever. Like, just think about Jason itself was, like, scary. Yeah, because he's huge. He's a hulking individual. Yeah, I, I saw that would be probably my, you know... Slasher. I was Michael Myers scared me okay. as, when I was younger, yeah. slasher wise. Yeah. But he didn't terrify me. Freddy terrified me more because he would yeah. get me in my dreams. Like I couldn't Cujo run. Cujo too, but I don't know if that's considered. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, Cujo also got me too. Now I also remember the movies that scared me more when I got a little bit older, like watching like Candyman as a kid and The Shining. I watched them the, the same Shining, night. I was just gonna say, so The Shining and uh, The Exorcist, when she spins her whole head around yeah. and like, vomits, that's when I was <laughs> like, what is going on right now? Yeah. You know, and if you watch that when you're like ten or eleven or twelve, like you're like right on the border of like, wait, yeah, can this happen? Uh, maybe, probably not, but that's really scary. See, as an adult now, I went and saw Halloween Kills in the theater with, like, an audience, and my wife got mad at me. She didn't get mad at me. She got mad at me at what I did after he does this one kill. Spoilers, anyone who hasn't seen it, where this woman shooting a gun at him and keeps getting closer and she gets so close and he's by a car. He kicks the car door, it hits the gun and she shoots herself in the head. Oh, jeez. And I started laughing, hysterically laughing. <laughs> and the dude behind me takes his phone and turns his light on and shines it in my face. And I was like, are you, like, you're in a pitch black, so, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. your eyes are like this now. I'm like, you gotta be kidding. So me being, you know, meat stick, I turn mine on and go like that back and my wife is like what are you doing like knock it off i was like all right you're right i'm an adult now i'm not a ch I'm not a teenager <laughs> but anyway i went to the point where this guy was scary to now i'm laughing at him yeah, killing yeah, people like and it's i always find it funny you see people are like i don't do horror movies and it's like are you still 10 yeah you're still nine years old yeah like yeah. you can overcome this right They're please not, you know it's not real yeah are ghosts real? Do you think ghosts are real? Sure. You're stupid. Why am I stupid? Just because I'm... Here's the thing. I almost became... I almost... So, I've been a vegetarian for almost a decade now. I almost, bitch! I, Use a bitch! I almost <laughs> decided to not because of the ideas I read somewhere about we don't eat animals because we prescribe human emotions to them. But we don't do that to plants, so we see it's okay to do that. Where who? So what happens is we create a human centeredness yeah, to yeah. how we experience and do everything. And I was like, wow, that's really like me being human. Like, what happens if I could transcend and be more like, I don't know, a plant and not yeah. care that they show emotion, or maybe I I could become a rock or some cosmic Shut being. Just up. you know. You get what I'm saying, though. No, I don't. I you can't would. relate to that. I could give you some substance. Go that, into maybe. the conversation. All right, sorry. You got me off <laughs> task. You told me that I was mean. I was... All right. So we're calling this, like, masters of the... You, I mean, sport. <laughs> Master of sport. And, like, there's an origin to this, where this comes from. Yeah. And I know when we were discussing this, my first thought went immediately to Rocky IV. Yeah. And like Apollo Creed, James Brown out there singing. And here comes Ivan Drago. My biggest memory was Boom. I used to sit behind the couch watching Rocky IV. And when, and when Apollo Creed gets punched and dies, I, wow. I would literally hide behind the couch while it happened. Because I didn't want to see Apollo Creed die. I was like, he can't die, he can't die. And like seeing his wife like like that, her face, it was like, dude, and, and I honestly part of my emotional struggles, I hate seeing other people in distress. And so seeing uh his wife, like right after he he drops, was like, dude, I can I can replay the whole scene so vividly, and that happened, you know, that was almost 30 years ago. Uh, so that's like my biggest Rocky Four. I always think of him dancing and Ivan Drago was like, man, I'm not doing this. I'm, I'm like Russian, I'm sports science. Like, and they show him training. And yeah, it's they like, fucking put the needle in yeah, his arm. They have all this stuff and Rocky's like out there in the snow. Yeah. Like, oh, look how good it's I It's so am. actual opposite of what <laughs> actually probably <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
But I hear Master of Sport, and it makes me think of your boy, Dr. B, yeah, okay. your Obi-Wan Kenobi, if you will, right? Yeah, yeah. And, like, that whole idea, like, is there this, like, Master of Sport, like, is it a Russian thing? <laughs> Our old USSR? I mean, yeah, I would say, no, but, but I, th I think, like, where people forget because we're so us versus them, like, this is not a Russian thing. It's like an okay. ancient, it's in, it's really uh, Asian martial arts uh, gotcha. style of training. Like, dude, there was, there was um, you know, belt degrees well before the master of sport degree system that the Soviet Union created. There, there was belt degrees um, in, in various different, you know, Taekwondo or, or karate or, or uh, judo or, you know, jujitsu uh, way before any of this, even the train, literally training people to be ninjas and stuff. So like, that's what I'm going as for work. Yeah. So for me, it, it's like, I think the, uh, you know, and, and I am a Confucius type person like study like that's what I like you probably to study posted Facebook groups about that stuff I bet no I'm in I'm in a Ruism Facebook group though oh okay Ruism is actually what it should be called not Confucianism just for the lay people like yourself yeah who listen to noise rock music whatever it's called I also listen to hip hop music too <laughs> I, I know <laughs> <laughs> but so um, I believe like that that master of sports system yes it is a Russian that that term is from the soviet system okay but to me it's a very good way of of bringing people up through ranks uh to to uh, achievement and and recognition and also giving them something to follow through with and i think that's actually something that we fail with in the u.s is that if we looked at um mixed martial arts and wrestling and and even football and and all of these these uh sports that we have in a system of of degree based uh understanding we would have a much more cerebral perspective on those sports Man. and i think that that's why i do like master of sports so much okay and, and the podcast name and, and all that I yeah think no. that it's it's very much so rooted one in, in my phil philosophical um, sort of tone towards what I think life is, is, is basically just constantly working and, and going through all these different phases, but also the, you know, also through as a coach. Yeah. When you said the belts, I mean, they thought like the first time I like, I always saw the belts and like, you see like people who do it now, it's like so clean, like you buy it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, here's the yellow. Yeah. And I, I, sometime, somewhere I heard something like, well, the whole point was everyone starts with a white belt. Yeah. And it becomes a black because it, it gets, gets so dirty. dirty. Yeah. And, and I thought of the yellow belt, and just now I just thought, I was like, I wonder how you get a yellow belt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> brown one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that's, that's what's sad, too, is that in, in our culture uh, now, it's like you'll have kids that'll tell you, like, yeah, they're, they're 15, 16, 17 years old, and they were black belt in karate. Yeah. Get out of here. No, you weren't. You weren't. Like, like how many years did you study yeah, to get like that? Yeah, like, my brother had to do jiu-jitsu for over a decade to become a black belt. And, yeah. And also, like, go into tournaments and, and show proficiency and, and win and, and do things like that. It's like, no, dude, you weren't. So I think that that's, like, that's my draw to, to that. But also, like, just being around Dr. B, it was always, like, very clear-cut uh, progressions to become a master of sport. Like, certain things you had to achieve, certain things you had to do, a um, certain uh, level of intellect that you had to achieve as well to get to that point. So is master of sport from, like, is it a physical capability or is it a knowledge capability? I think, I mean, I think, I think it's, it depends. I, but, but really... It's it's gonna be physical and, and intellectual. Because like Dr. B's you like you still have to achieve like the creme de la creme. Like I yeah. want a gold medal and right uh, yeah and I coach gold medal like I, yeah and I can yeah. run circles around all you, of you in an academic setting in, too. In the Soviet system, you had to achieve things internationally. Okay. And I also do believe there's a point where like even in degree based uh, belt belt systems, like you had to do th certain things physically. You have to be able to show that. You you have an understanding intellectually, and you can you can uh, execute that intellect physically. Gotcha. 
Because that's also, I mean, that's also another form of intellect. Yeah, and I'm thinking too, like, can you really understand that, like, that elite if you're not at least around that elite? Like, I'm not saying you have to be. You don't have to be, but it, it, it's. It, like, there's a reason NBA coaches were NBA players a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think that a lot of people like to say, oh, well, sometimes the, the guys, you know, um, you know, I'm thinking about, like, uh, who's the guy with the Warriors? One of the. Steve Kerr? Or one of the, the coach or the players? Yeah, one of the coaches. Like, they, they weren't the best. Oh. But it's it was, also like, dude, he was still in the NBA for like 12 years. Yeah. Like, get out of here. He, he was with the best, well, and he was one of the what, best. Like, what I think's silly about the Warriors, and I don't watch, like, I don't have cable, so I don't get to really watch sports, yeah. but, like, I know they're legit. Steve Kerr was, like, your outside perimeter yeah. shooter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, if he got kicked and got an open shot, he put up a three. That's how the game's played now, now right? Like entirely so like, like that. here's this guy who was like a role player. He's like, I wonder what a, a game would be like if everyone played like me. Yeah, exactly. And all of a sudden the game changes. It's, it's different. It, yep. And they pl- So to go back to that though, I think it's like I think it you to to achieve some to you've gotta get to a certain level of elite to right. be able to train elite people. Like I think where I was fortunate to, because I, you know, I, yes, I made it to U.S. Nationals and I, I did make it to NCAAs, but I was never really, really elite. But I spent time around elite people. And I also think, like, uh, I, I think that helped me. I, I think I sort of cheated to get to, the, to where I am now. Yeah. You know, I think Bill Belichick's similar. I think he was very, very similar, but he just had the elite knack. To just continuously grind to get to that. Are you point. talking about Tom Brady's lackey? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. You don't leave one team, go to the other one, and immediately win a Super Bowl. <laughs> and the team you left is like, hold on. Dude, he now. won the Super Bowl when Tom Brady was garbage. I don't think Tom Brady was ever like. Garbage, garbage. <laughs> Maybe from like a stat, he wasn't like MVP. But I think that guy has some type of like innate. I'm gonna win, and it's gonna happen. So that's where I think also like the 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 name, um, yeah, as a discussion like the master name. Like, yeah. what does that name mean? It's like this all encompassing. You have knowledge of that specific topic or whatever it is. You know, I, I think about master carpenters. Like, like okay. you know how to work. You know how wood works. You know how specific types of wood react differently to water and, and, and different, like, meaning different trees and stuff. Right, and right. Then, and then how long it might take, um, you know, what happens does, why doesn't, um, you know, if we're talking about ground contact, why doesn't locust rot? Why doesn't uh, walnut, why can that dry on the hoof? And, and so you have an understanding of all those things, and you also have the practical ability to work with it. And I think, to me, that is that is that term master, and that's where somebody like Tom Brady, like, he had the knack of all of the inner workings, and he could see, he can, and he can, he can still see, he's 44, and he can still see, obviously. Yeah. You know, how everything engages with with other areas, and you just have that that firm comprehension that it's hard to really pin something on, and, and you, but you can, just, you can just do it. You can just do it. Yeah. And it's funny you say you were never, like, elite elite. And I, I know you. Like, you're not elite elite unless you, like, podiumed at the Olympics the way you talk sometimes. And I think that, <laughs> I feel like, all right, that's legit, but I also think that's a, a remnant of the money in the sport. Because if you think about the NBA where there's a ton of money, think about how many people are elite, elite. Yeah, no, right? I've done that game where I've actually played the game, like based off of my best world ranking, I would have been, you know, if the track yeah. and field had the NFL, I would have been like top one, top 100 player in the league or something, yeah. you know. It maybe it was like 150, but when you start to think about it that way, right. it's different. N- now you compare yourself, and if you do like, if you say the whole world is a, a population, right? Yeah. If you're 100, 150 out of 7 billion, right. like your decimal place is pretty far to the right. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think people get lost sometimes and like... Or would it be decimal place to the left? Well, it, you'd have a few zeros and then you'd be... 
Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you'd be that point zero 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 one, Right, right. Instead of the point zero 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 one. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And, like, I remember talking to Timon about that one time. He's like, I'm pretty strong. I'm like, yeah, but you're not one in seven billion strong. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you're not squatting a thousand pounds. Like, you know what I'm saying? You're not, yeah. like, you deadlift, what, 700? Yeah, 705. You're, that's about 70% of the the world like the, the most world there, record yeah. right you yeah. know what i mean but still like you're strong so like strong. that's an elite number you yeah. get what i'm saying like yeah. with that so sometimes that perspective is like that also needs to be fleshed out and discussed yeah yeah but that's part of too like why that master comes in if you i will. think that's that's the whole like, thing is like when you when you look at something like master and, and with this discussion it would be that would make I, I think when you when you do see it that way, it's like there you can be a master. You you can be. There's a lot of masters, um, and they're always not that there's a lot, but there you can have access to masters, and especially now, um, and that can impact that. And to me, it's also like masters are also individuals that are sharing their information, right? Because a master is less ideally less egotistical is they're going to be looking to to help the next people the right because they don't feel threatened yeah they're, in that they're, regard yes, like exactly there's there's i don't want to say there's an e there's a confidence to like i know what i know and how to deliver it and like yeah. you having this information will benefit me as much right. as it benefits and they you. also get that part of that mastery i believe is also the is social interaction too. yeah and like that's one thing with dr b yes he's quirky he's different but like he was always willing to, he was an open book. You could ask him any question yeah. you wanted. You know, he might be different now. He's getting old. He's, he's, I believe he's 80 now. But it's like, at the time I was around him, he sort of was a really good example for me. You know, and I'm not saying I'm a master. Uh, I actually wanted to talk about that because I don't think for, for, in this sense of mastering a sport coaching, I know this is, I've always just felt like 40 is like a good age. Do you? Yeah. Me too. I'm looking forward to like the salt and pepper coming in. <laughs> like. Uh, I've always told people that when I turn 40, I'm not going to listen to any parents that come in. I'm just going to be like, no, like I've got four kids. I know what it's like to be a parent. Go outside. Yeah. Trust me. You can look at all the banners. I'll, I'll text you some pictures. Yes. And go away. <laughs> Your kid will end up on the yeah. Instagram story at some <laughs> yeah. point yeah. when they do something well. So I've always felt that that way uh, as far as, like, is there an age? That's what I've always sort of felt about. Hey, that. I want to go back to something. When you were talking about the carpenters yeah, and you were talking about, like, learning the skill, I immediately thought of apprentice, yeah, like an apprenticeship. Yeah. And, like, with you with Dr. B, like, that was an apprenticeship. Yeah, like, when you studied with some of them. And I thought about myself, too, like, the last science class I took was biology of the birds. Yeah. But you're, like... You're an ornithologist. Nah, not at all. Yeah. Even though I like, I go look at the hawk that has the nest by my house and, <laughs> and check. Anyway, but like when I came to you and started learning, like it felt like what I, I thought an apprenticeship would be. Yeah. Like asking questions, giving an answer. And usually you feel good as an apprentice when you ask a question, you're like, that's really good. And like, you can't answer right away because yeah. they have to think about it. And it's like, all right, so in that way, like, you help them learn because right. they have to problem solve. Yeah. And I'm sure, you, like, with Dr. B, can you remember that yeah. moment where you, like, asked him a question and he was like, he paused. I would ask him, uh, I would ask him a lot about he he heavy lifting because he, in his system, didn't have it. And uh, I would ask him about other people that, that were in the sport. And, and sometimes he would always sort of just, like, push me away. Um, and there was two times that, and these are funny stories, because I, I could get him stumped pretty easily to think, uh, to really be like, oh, gosh, i got to actually think about this for this idiot who's asking me these questions. And <laughs> one time he's laying on his couch. I feel and, like I was insulted there. <laughs> well, <No>. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's laying on his couch, and I like I would go talk to him on Thursdays and when uh, we weren't training, and that I would come in basically during his nap time, and so sometimes he would be mad because he just wanted to take a nap. <laughs> so I'm asking him a lot of questions, and I could tell like he was getting close to his end, 
and he and I asked him like, well, what about this guy? He he, you know, power cleaned this, and then five days later he threw this, and wouldn't that show that that didn't have a negative impact on this? And he like throws his hands up, and he's like, Dang, I tell you, every system has yeah, and he's like even more broken English than that. Yeah, every system can work, but there must be some type of system you have to follow a pattern to okay. figure out what works and in, in very broken english but he's screaming this and so then i you know later on this is probably like two weeks later he's asking we're talking about uh, genetics and and he was like basically starts screaming at me i don't care what you say about genetics my dad wasn't athletic and then and he was an olympic champ dr b and he goes and look my wife, Galena, big chest. My mother, big chest. <laughs> Galena's mother, big chest. <laughs> My daughter, no chest. She has no chest. So where are genetics? They don't mean anything. <laughs> it's like, I was like, I mean, I don't know what you want me to say to that. Well, That's a weird way to look at it, but. I, I, yeah. I think basically what he was saying is he's like, Ge genetics, you know, uh, physical is different, but um, in that in that discussion, uh, I, I in that case, he's seen, you know, kids come in that are, you know, parents were phenomenal athletes and they didn't do anything. The kids, right, anything, and and vice versa, and so I think you know he actually talked about an athlete, Yuri Tam, who was like that, who's who. He could barely walk and chew gum, and then five years later, he came back, and the kid, the guy, was an absolute freak because. His parents weren't athletic, but they sort of, they just felt like he could become that. And so they kept pushing him towards uh, lifting weights and throwing hammer. So anyway, I, I think like being a master is being able to see all of those different experiences. And, uh, and also in that case with, with Dr. B, like being able to, to a point, like be stumped and like, try to just get you to see like it's not as clear as you think it is right you know it's okay to be different in different systems so i hear you talking about some of the attributes now like you mentioned like the openness the ability to communicate yeah are there any other ones like you see masters have i think you've got to be able to motivate people to a point uh your presence could be enough and that's how dr b was it was just just presence. being around yeah, them just like being there you, you just lift knew. you up yeah yeah i think that's a big characteristic i think some semblance of organization. Um, I think being having some type of emotional connection as well is important. Yeah. Um, and, I, I, and I think just, I mean, I don't know if work ethic would be part of the characteristic, but I think. I would think trait. a master would have a pretty, like, reasonable work ethic. Yeah, it's just like you're, they're not going to be, they're not going to become a master by being a turd. Right, like. They're, yeah. they're doing something about it. Yeah, all the time because they're learning. They want to learn. Yeah. That's, that's why they're masters. That's all they're into is they want to learn, 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 and they just go. Learn it all, not know it all. Right, exactly. All and I think that through. that's a great. That's that's a, it's it's literally learn it all. Like, do you don't know yeah. you don't know anything, and yeah, you can say, well, you don't know, you don't know what you don't know, but it's like, no, literally, you just don't know. You have to constantly learn. Yeah. And the more that you are open to learning, the better everything will be. It will come. It will come around. Yeah. Maybe you'll discover something, and it be like, and that was like the little trick to take yeah. that, not as genetically gifted or something, Person and turn them up. into it. Yep. You know. Yep. Exactly. No, I hear you with that. Um, two. When you say master, my one of the first thoughts I had was like academia. Yeah. Like studying. Like, oh, here's your master's degree. Like. I think that's <laughs> that's the one thing that's funny is that uh, I know I cut you off there, but it, it's, uh, that's all right. it's 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 like uh, I do relate. And, and I know we're egotistical to a point calling this podcast the Masters of Sport, but I think um, I, it, it makes it, it's so easy for somebody to get their Masters or their PhD, and it's like they have that title, and then they just sort of like kick back. And, and Dr. B used to say that. He'd be like, guys that go to college, they wear a white coat, and he used to say this all the time. They wear a white jacket, and, they, and he has a PhD. Yeah. They wear a white jacket and then they're done. And they think everything's good. Now I have this next to my name, D R right. D O, you know, you know, PhD, and I'm the best. And they're done. And he's like, that's not what you need. You know? So I remember one lesson from middle school. My uh it was like my social studies teacher. I forget if I was in eighth grade. I think I was in eighth grade. I remember this. I'm I'm he, 
my, my social studies teacher's past. I'm still friends with his son. Yeah. I actually saw him this weekend. Um, he taught this lesson. He put um, BS, MS, and PhD. And he's like, you know what this is? This is bullshit. This is more shit. And now it's pretty high and deep. <laughs> that's what I remember from, like, middle, middle school. school. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's the one lesson I remember. Says Earl, who's, aren't you getting your PhD? Or is that no, your... no, no. I'm going for a second master's. Oh, okay. But... So you're just getting twice that's on, as, so, that you're getting on, twice as much shit. That, yeah, yeah, that's someone else's. <laughs> my first one was an MA, thank you. Okay. <laughs> no. More, uh, I don't know. Yeah. But those were those were on someone else's dime. Those weren't on my dime. But I, I think that, that, that the, what you just said, though, it's a good example. It's like, I, I was thinking about like stuff like that with schooling. It's just like, to me, master of sport is like, so practical, and I think that that's how you should approach uh, whatever your job is that you, if you like your job, you know, in a directive of, I want to learn as much about this as I can while I'm here. You know? Yeah. At some point, I die. So, do I want to die being known for the dude who complained by the water cooler, or do I yeah, want to yeah. die being known as like the person who was open minded and wanted to learn stuff all the time? To try and help other people learn, to try and make things better. Yeah. So it's like you have really just two choices. Maybe that's more what it is. This is like the educators of sport type of thing too, and like almost that that master feels like this demarcation. Like trust me. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a it's like a way for somebody who's younger to just um, superficially buy into yeah buy into that level. Well, too like. Proofs in the pudding a little bit too, as they say. Or wait, that's not really how it all goes though. There's another thing after that that I forget in the saying. Yeah. Like it used to have something to do with like you have to eat it then too. I forget. Whatever. I'm not that old. Proofs in the pudding eat the results. Something like that. That's what we'll say. <laughs> Gobble them up. <laughs> you know, like take that turkey leg and chew on it. Or in my case, like that meat substitute satan. <laughs> Okay, so so using that, I think that's the other thing with with masters is like some of the stuff is also going to be related to how well the individual can challenge themselves. Okay. So it goes back to the learn it all, not know it all. Yeah. And and that's like the biggest aspect behind so, that to be too. You know, like that learning and all thing and talking about like schooling and like schooling, I, I don't know, I think of books too, right? Like, yeah. you know, if you were privileged enough to go to college and like fortunate enough and like accrue all that debt, maybe some people, like, you know, if you didn't, you had to, at the beginning of every semester, you had to buy books, right? Yeah, yeah. And it was like, here, you have to read this, this, and this. And I, I know one of my biggest pet peeves was like, you're telling me I read this book and I learn stuff. Why am I? Why am, why I, am I paying? I do. Like, that's I can exactly just buy these books yeah, and read and it. And read it. And and I know. I think it was last episode we started talking about Franz Bosch, and he like mentioned in his books he writes this. Like, yeah. what are I guess like if you want to be a master of sport, what are some books you rec like where to start maybe, or at least like how to challenge like, uh, because. I read Franz Bosch and like that's tough. Like yeah, it's hard. It's it's more like, dude. I I honestly, dude. You want to? I I have a book. It's like Bill Pearl's Keys to the Inner Uni Inner Universe. That's like one of the best. It's like a book this thick and it's just lifts. Okay. It's all these lifts that you can just try, and it's all old school bodybuilding lifts that you're like, oh my gosh, I want to try this. And it's like if you have that in a, in your garage and you're just working out, that's how you're gonna learn. Yeah. And so I think that 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 book for me also. Um, there's a guy named Arkady Borobiev. Uh, it's like a, not many people talk about it from a weightlifting mindset. And I think that that was one of the biggest impacts on me as a weightlifting coach because it really jived with what I learned from Dr. B. Um, I think those two are, are, were huge for me. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, Verka and Mel, Mel Sif, those are the best super training. And it's like, Dude, most of that stuff's total horseshit. Yeah, like, like he he stole a lot of the ideas. First of all, so that's part of why I don't like it because he also stole shit from Doctor B. Okay, um, and he's your boy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and and like he also he was the Doctor B didn't like him because he was a white coat. He's like he didn't train anybody. I gotcha. Um, neither of those guys. I did. like this idea of white coats now yeah. too. Like, yeah, so that's this, like, like pejorative for academics that like I, I have don't a, go out in the field. Yeah, and, and I have I will say there's there's a. Um, uh, 
Comey, uh, Pablo Comey has a book called, it's like the Science and Sport or something. Okay. That book I really do like quite a bit. And there's another one from another Finnish guy, uh, two guys. It's got like a green, it's like fitness and strength training, but it's like applied fitness and strength training. I, I actually have a book right in my office, but I don't really. Yeah, you do have that bookshelf up there of yeah. like, I shouldn't say bookshelf, bookshelves. And I, just I also like just think there's, I had so many books of like, uh, you know, Robert Kennedy, old bodybuilding guys. Paula Quinn has a couple that I really yeah. like. So it's oh, like. Like that one yeah, there. <laughs> you just have one sitting there. Like this. But like, I think. I, I, I think that, I, that's, that would be where I would start. A lot of yeah. guys, oh, Zatsiorski's book's great. Yeah, Zatsiorski's book's good, but it's like, it's sort of generic. And I think that you've got to have, if you're going to be generic, it can't be scientifically generic. It has to be generic for sport development. And that's the thing okay. with Bill Pearl's book, is it's like, okay, I'll just try this stuff and see what happens. And then all of a sudden, a year later, if you try all every day, you're, you, you're 20 pounds bigger in muscle. Right, right. And I think that's like, the well, type of book I like. It was funny. Um, who did you write? Was it DeLillo or Dettil? I always forget how to Dettil. say it. Anthony the, DeTillo. Anthony DeTillo is probably the, 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 I would actually argue that would be my number two or three book. I remember reading that one, and yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, I bet Dane read this one. Like, yeah. just some of the stuff, like, coming through with it. It's like the... Or, uh, Almost like your... Um, power and development, I think. Yeah, your, your rampant concept yeah. was very similar to how he, yeah. like... And I'm like, what year was this? What's cool is I got to talk to Jim Schmidt about... Anthony Dottillo, and he was like, he's never that good of a weightlifter, but he was really, really, really strong. And he had guys that were that would go to his place because he's, I think he passed away in East Stroudsburg. Oh, wow. Yeah, and uh, Jim Schmidt is from, uh, Schmitz is from San Francisco. And he was like, he would get a lot of guys from the Eagles, the Giants, the Jets that would just come lift with him because he was like the big time strong guy. Yeah. Uh, so he was never super popular because he was sort of like this, you know, he was friends with a guy named Dezo Ban, who... That's a cool name. It's a really, really cool name. Yeah. He was, like, known almost like as a strong man that looked like uh, Franco Colombo. Okay. So I think those are the... And his book's not popular. But that would be the first book that I would actually tell anybody to read other yeah. than Bill Pearl's book. And that one reads... It, it reads... Oh, I it love the like way a, it reads. It, it reads, reads so like fun. Journal. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's like his journal like, of like... Show up, do this, do that. Yeah, and you have to train five to six days a week yeah. for two to three hours, maybe four, eat a lot of food. Yeah. And his jumps are like huge, show yeah. up. Just like, this guy had like... Myofibular under that work. Yeah, yeah. It was big. <laughs> a lot of myofibular nah. work. And he so, loved the power racks, too. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, here, here's the thing. You read all that old school stuff because they didn't have the science to back up certain things, and you start to realize, like, these guys had a, a clue because they were testing themselves and they were doing experiments. Yeah. And that's even where, like, old school bodybuilders like Perry Rader, even a, a, another guy who's finished, Per Tesh, they start to to study uh, joint angles and like points of flexion was a big thing, and that's stuff that Man. now people are like, oh, you should train like athletes to get bigger. Oh, you should do this. Oh, look at this point of flexion. It's like, dude, this stuff's been around like knees over toes. Dude, tibialis raises. Yeah. Dude, tibialis. Uh, the tib bar has been around for 45, 50 years. Like this is not new. Bringing it back. Yeah, it's just this constant cycle back. Man. Take hits from the oldies. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> take hits from the oldies and then mix it up. And But it's like with this, it's like if we actually listen to our masters of sport and if we had a designation, yeah. that's the whole problem is that in, the, in, the, in this system that we have, everything's financially based off of institutions. So we always listen to the uh, white yep. coats. And the white coats are also going to be linked to these coaches and stuff. And the coaches that, they, that are at these universities are not actually experimenting with stuff. So it comes back to if we had a system here that was – based around sport mastery and sport comprehension, everything would be much more advanced. And that's kind of the beauty of here, too, is like all the experiments that are going on right. within the programming on which different athletes and the AB group and like then how, how that stuff's even used then through the marketing. Dude, we're doing and that, one right now with, yeah. the, with the throwers that for the last three and a half, four programs, they've all been on the exact same program. And I'm just to see what's adapt, what's happening. And then everybody hit, so then we also started to squat first because I'm, I'm changing things up to test in the fall. Just this past Sunday, there was four, four people that have squatted over 550 pounds for reps. And it's like, this is, 
proving out pretty interesting because that was the first week, and a lot of them didn't even feel that good because they were still recovering from the previous program. <laughs> and then just getting super strong. Yeah, and it's like, dude, this is going to be interesting to see what happens in a month, two, three months from now because we're also going to use this throughout the rest of the year. I remember when you started having all your weightlifter squat first for a bit, too. Yeah, yeah. I do like doing that, but I've learned with that it's only like once or twice a year. Yeah, but... Some of them are actually doing that right now leading into the American Open, uh, the second to last block before the American Open. But I also, too, I appreciate how subtle some of the experiments are, where it could be as simple as, like, moving an exercise somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, you have to... When you talk about variation... Like, if, you, if we're going to hit the moon, right, but we're off by this, we could end up at Saturn yeah, yeah, yeah. if we're traveling that far. Right. So people have to understand, I think, like, if you want to be the master, sometimes maybe you need to take that risk to and get out and see, like, how yeah. far can we go? Yeah. Like, do we really just want to end up on the moon? Like, Dude, you know here's what I mean? a good example. Lucy, so a girl that trains with us now for like three and a half, four years. Right, right. She's got a full-time job. She's 49? Job. Yeah. Okay. I, full, I, full-time job, works all the time. She's on a system where she's got really, really heavy lifting days, weight lifting, snatch, clean, jerk. And then heavy squat, super, super light technique work afterwards. Dude, she just snatched 65, which is not, it's not huge for like the national like top three but that's like a top five, top six snatch, and it's a huge PR for her. Uh-huh. And it's like, this is actually like, and she's 28, 29 years old, like, works a full-time job. Again, she's got a lot of stress. Yeah. And she's hitting clean and jerk and snatch PRs because of the way I'm laying out, improving her technique versus pushing, you know, the weights on the platform. And now it's, now I'm looking at like, shit, I may be on, onto something interesting. And it's really because I got this, I stole this directly from another coaching friend of mine who happens to train the second best shot player in the world. Man. So, do you think then that's like a, a master mindset? Like, you also need to hang around other to people. Point, yeah, you have to. You've got to be able to drop your ego and be around people who are better than you. Yeah. All right. I hate using the example of like, you're only as... You're only Why as... do you always frame everything in competitive standpoint? Maybe it's because everything's sport and it is all competitive. Wait, how did I frame it competitively? Who's better than you? I think I just see people as better than me. Huh. They my, you I, like you like that underdog narrative yeah, for you, yourself. Yeah, for my for my own personal. Yeah, I got that's, you. That's accurate. That's I think just my motivation. Yeah. But if if uh, if we use that and you use the this really hokey, you're only as wealthy as your five closest friends. Okay. I do believe that does have some type of uh, crossover to understanding coaching. Is that I'm only going to be as good as my five closest coaching friends. So you got to start hanging out with all the best. Bill Belichick. Yeah. <laughs> no, but here, I think, Tom. Let me get your coat. But I think for what's you. cool is like, dude, talking to the guy from Oregon, the football strength coach. Uh-huh. I'm learning like. Like I'm learning some interesting stuff as far as like the dynamics of of where those five people will be, and that's my whole thing. Is it's like, is it you know I'm going to 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 Penn State's strength coach. I'm going to his house in two weeks. It's like, is it in the is it in the football world, or is it in the track world, or in the weightlifting world, or in the you know where where is that exist, or is it in all of those worlds? When are you heading over Europe or like. Well, Asia, yeah, I mean, uh, you getting uh, it over there at all? I would like to. You I mean, I do have. I don't. I'm not tight with Vestin, who's a throws coach, who I think is one of the best ever. Or probably is the best ever. But I'm close you, enough. You got to make some phone calls. Yeah, I do. See, hey, I want to come hang out with you. <laughs> Can we be friends, please? Yeah. <laughs> come on, buddy. All right, so master, hang out with people. Hang be out, social. Yeah. Be social. Learn Drop it. your ego. Yeah. Realize your not as smart as you think you are. Read some books. Have a distinct way of motivation. Your motivation should be to learn. It's funny, when you talk about some of these people, like the books you're reading to, it made me think of like crate digging, like hip hop, like Mad Lib. Dude, it seems like Like going through thing. the crates and they're like, look at what here's, I found. Here's my, here's my <laughs> whole take on life, and maybe this is how we close this out, is that, is that if, if I know how deep I've dug for, you know, we talked about, uh, Sci-fi. It's 1970 sci-fi. And I've read yeah. 
almost all of Philip K. Dick books, right? If I know that I had to dig deep to find the best sci-fi, and then the same thing with, with sci-fi that at least I watched, um, and then you go into music and you go, all right, well, I have these 10 genres of music, and I've dug as deep as I can into all this stuff. Yeah. I have to put that same effort into my my life for my relationships, for my coaching, for whatever I want to succeed, whatever motivates right. me to be successful. So it's like, then you start to see when you're digging, you see the same people digging through the crates. Yeah. At least when we were in college and you actually still had uh, music uh, stores like that, I would see the same guys at the, at the store all like at least twice a week. Right. Because I would go Tuesday nights when they were dropping the new the new LP. You know, that's when everything was released when we were younger. Yeah, now it's not so much. Now they're just yeah, like, Yeah, now it's eh. just like whatever. But there was always a distinct day. It would drop on a Tuesday, and it's like from you would see the same people there. So then you'd start to learn, well, what are they listening to? Right, right. And it's the same shit when you're talking about sports. Algorithm like, yeah. free, buddy. Yeah, it's Algorithm like you're, free. <laughs> you're around people who are like-minded, who are thinking like you, yeah. who are motivated like you, who treat people the way you would want to treat people and then you become you learn from the other diggers the other masters you learn from the other diggers yeah man maybe we should start calling like masters diggers like it's just a little thing they they got they got their shovels out put it in the work right we got the (laughs) metaphor and everything like that awesome Uh, oh do we we got some reddit ones okay let's go all right zidane on the ball man i feel like the soccer guy from france oh yeah francois um, I'm very curious about the effects of indirect training. Say I want to increase my barbell back squat by 20 pounds. If I do not practice on my squat, but instead do everything related to strengthening the same aspects of the squat, like front squats, hack squats, overhead lunges, core work, adductor isolation work, lower back strengthening, Romanian deadlifts for hamstrings, etc., will my back squat be significantly affected by those movements and thus I get stronger on my barbell back squat? Or does the principle of specificity have to be stubbornly applied here? Thank you. Smiley emoji. Front squat five days a week for six months and your back squat will go up. All right. I feel like the but front squat is be... pretty specific, though. Yeah, but it carries over well. Yeah, super well. So I would tell the guy, like, you should be specific, but the next specific movement that he mentioned was Yeah, I know. Squat. What happens if we get rid of that one? Because that one... Then, it, then it's not going to grow. Okay. Yeah. It won't grow because you just... I always found too, and I bet you could attest this too. Like your trunk just can't hold it. Yeah, you start to collapse even yeah. worse. You can't do. Especially if you're long-legged. If this uh, guy is a Dane. Uh. All right, from OK Garlic. Hey, I love your stuff, and to my understanding, you are very knowledgeable when it comes to training for vertical jump. I feel like they want the vertical jump manifesto. <laughs> what are the pros and cons of comparing trap bar high pulls, trap bar jumps, and power hang cleans? I feel like it is a topic that is being debated a lot more now and was wondering if you could break it down more comprehensively as nobody else has, maybe in a video or something. Thanks a lot. Keep up the great work. Okay, my short answer would be trap bar is going to be more anterior sequence, uh, more quads. They're good. They're good. They're excellent movements. But the the difference if if I'm doing a high a high hang snatch pull, you know a high yeah. hang high high pull, I'm gonna get my whole posterior chain to even light it up even more. And I I will actually watch weightlifters jump. All weightlifters know how to jump. That is not accurate with powerlifters. Okay. All so right. so if you're if you watch powerlifters jump, they will jump backwards. Watch a weightlifter jump. They know how to use their upper body. So it's like. Dude, trap bar stuff's great. It's fantastic. So is executing. A, you have to be coordinated. Do a high hang power snatch or a high hang uh, power clean, or even a two box. All these, all these movements. If you can coordinate more effectively, you're gonna jump higher. Yeah. They're all good, but but sorry, weightlifting movements. They, I don't care what anybody says. When I have women that have 30 inch verticals, bring me someone that just do, does trap bars. It's a chick that, that has a 30 inch vertical. Yeah. You won't find them anywhere. I'm hearing a well-balanced diet with your uh, choices from the buffet with what movements you use can pay off. Three Musketeers, Butterfingers, <laughs> Sweet Tarts, lots of Skittles, lots of M&Ms, moderate on the peanut M&Ms because they oh, give man. me really bad gas. You didn't even say Reese's Pieces. Dude, Reese's Pieces are my favorite candy. Yeah. That's my number one. 
all the time. I don't say stuff like that because I don't want people to eat my Reese's Pieces. Oh. They you, get pissed. You're, you're like, you're giving a misdirect there. <laughs> One day we'll have Sam on this, and Sam can come in, and there was a day that we partied with Alex at his house, and he had three boxes of Reese's Pieces, of uh, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups in his cabinets, and the next day there weren't any peanut butter cups left. You went in. Me and Alex just ruined it. It's like, it was like five straight hours. All right, last one. Rico Chavez. Coach Miller, I absolutely love the content on GarageStrength.com. I have personally purchased multiple programs, including thanks. parabolic periodization. Oh, thanks, Rico. I appreciate that. Weightlifting for sports performance, multiple wrestling and football strength programs, and a dozen power elastic bands. Chavez was the name that Lou Diamond Phillips, the, the character that Lou Diamond Phillips played in uh, Young Guns. Oh. Chavez. Nice. That's a cool movie. I think something that would help me the most, as well as other coaches that just starting their program is, how did you scale your business? How do you structure garage strength? And what do you consider going into depth with how that was possible, or maybe a program to follow on garage oh, strength shit. you can put together for coaches? So we should Thanks do again, like a Coach business, Miller. Yeah. business coaching course. What, um, I remember bef talking about that. Was that last? Was that I two would like years to do ago that. now? I do want to do that. We had like a, a meeting, like for yeah. hours, like laying out, like, hey, if we would do this, how would you do it? How would you do it? Uh, to answer the question briefly. First, Young Guns was actually shot at the same place where uh, Baldwin just killed that chick. Oh, wow. Yeah. Anyway, that's a whole another that just popped into my head. Clickbait. Here we yeah. go. <laughs> uh, so, Rest in peace, woman. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. Um, dude, the, I, I spent the first 10 years, um, the first 10 years I didn't have a business thought. It was literally, I just want to train athletes and I want to make them as good as I can make them so that people just bring athletes to me. And that's what I thought was business. Uh, I don't recommend that to anybody. Yeah. Because you just, you, you can't make money just doing that. Like you can, but you can't. Um, you've got to have some business thought. And I think that, uh, you know, really buying this place is what sparked me to be more business savvy. But I think that, that focus also created the, the, the results of what's continuing now. Um, and I, um, I've never had big backers. I've never, you know, I've never signed contracts with other gyms or anything, or I've never signed a contract with an investor. Uh, I've always been, you know, my parents invested with me, let, I could use their garage. Um, and my, my grandfather gave me 15,000 when we bought this place. So I'm privileged to, to have had that, but it was basically because he had seen it pan out when we were at the barn. Uh huh. Um, and I didn't have money. You know, I didn't have any. I literally didn't have money when we. We should never have gotten the mortgage to buy this place. We almost went bankrupt. Uh, you know, literally, we. That's a whole other. Like that, that that thought process of running a business led me to not having a hot water heater for six months in my house when I had three, uh, four kids. So, don't do that. <laughs> but. It also expedited, and COVID expedited the business process of learning um, that you do need to make money. And in fact, making money uh, and, and being a better business person is going to increase the odds of you developing more athletes. Right. And I think that's the way I see it now. Is it's, I used to look at it like, I'm not a business person, but now I'm like, dude, if I really want to be the best coach in the world, I've got to do this. So much so that I want to get to the point where... Um, I want to host a Diamond League meet or, or actually put on my own B-level uh, athletics competition because I have that much money that I'm capable of yeah. affording it and make it like this crazy spectacle that I put on and it's not controlled by like the higher-ups in world You athletics. can be the higher-up. Yeah. And, and, and You're the arbiter and now. And if I'm that way, <laughs> then I, I just feel like it'll be more fair. So anyway... Uh, <laughs> To go off of that, I think that would be a good, I think it would be a good course. I think it would be a good, uh, I could contribute tremendously to people who are going to start this. And, and dude, the fact of the matter is you're going to work 80 hours a week. So a lot of people just can't last. You can't. Strap work. up your boots. Yeah, that's the hard part is like, you got to make a lot of sacrifices. You, and, and I'm also fortunate that my wife makes even more sacrifices than I do. So that's, that's another whole oh, big factor, you know. And you got to be able to balance, like, listening to people talk about dumb politics. Oh. <laughs> Do you think you have to deal with that more in the gym or? 
I don't deal with that nearly as much now, I think, because everybody's, nobody, I don't think every, I don't think people really know how I feel politically. So I think that that, they don't want to talk, they also just, I, I just don't talk to people that are not, that I don't train really. Oh, I got you. you t today when I walked in, you were training mostly like 14 year old kids. <laughs> Well, they're not talking to me about politics. Yeah, That's I know. why I train them. <laughs> I, I pretty much most of them. There was a few adults. I, I think that's in, but yeah, I, I think maybe that's that's the whole thing here for for closing out that master of sport uh, discussion. Is it's like if you want to be a master of all this, you've you've got to be you've got to be working with young kids, really young kids that are and, and figuring out how to motivate them, and then you've also got to be w willing to work or able to work with elite level athletes and it might start at just high school or college but then you can get into post collegiate stuff and it's like now you train the gamut and that that experience is what develops you as a person and then you start to realize like if you really want to do go deep with with some serious goals like i would have is that then you uh you realize you have to be a better business person yeah i was about to say there wasn't there wasn't like elite and then i remember there was like two world team members out there training too i was like yeah yeah junior was there yeah and, uh, and anna, was anna. There. Yeah. and you have another one that's knocking on the door ryan will be there yeah yeah he's definitely going to be there next year so tune in next week to another episode of the master of sport jason we're sorry for making this so yeah long. especially for Peace. getting the, the manga bye <laughs>